Hello, welcome to the February mid-month math medley. Can you believe it? I actually did two videos in two months. So what's new in the world of maths since we last spoke? Well, Vi Hart has put out a video, always check out her videos. The Number File podcast started maybe two months ago or something, but if you haven't checked it out yet, then you've got an awesome backlog to catch up on. The Cliff Stoll one, the guy who makes these Klein bottles, really hits you in the feels. Joe Morgan is organising a book launch for Matt Parker's Humble Pie. I think it's on the 2nd of March and it's in London, so I won't be there. Major, major FOMO. But it looks like it's gonna be an amazing night of awesome maths fun. And of course, it was Valentine's Day, so love is in the air. Check out Hannah Fry's video on the mathematics of love. And also definitely check out Maths with Bad Drawings, Maths Pickup Lines. I love terrible pickup lines, so if you have any really cheesy Maths pickup lines, please fire them at me. And in keeping with the theme of love, here in the UK it is LGBTQ plus History Month. So I thought, obviously, what a good thing to do would be is highlight some LGBT mathematicians from throughout history. But I very quickly ran into some problems. Firstly, maths is so intrinsic to life and to human thinking that it has spanned all human cultures from ancient times when literally nobody cared if you were gay or straight, they didn't even have words for it, it was so normal all the way up until times when people cared so much that they were terrified about being outed. Maths has seen it all. So when you think about famous Greek mathematicians, Pythagoras, Euclid, Diophantus, Archimedes, Hypatia, probably some of these people are what we would now consider LGBT, but Back then, the way they thought about sexuality was so different that you can't even compare. There's no way to get that information back from history. Then there were times like in the 19th century when discrimination of women was so widespread that it's just impossible to figure out what on earth was going on. Sofia Kavlievska, who I spoke about last month, had to fake having a husband so that she could get her father's permission to move from Russia to Germany, where she became the first female mathematician to get a PhD. And she was probably gay. Which then led theorists at the time, and after her death, to believe that she had a man's brain, saying her innate male mental powers explained her scientific inclination and achievement. Because obviously you can't be a woman who likes women and is good at maths, because those are menly things for men. And then by the time that we reach the 20th century, somehow who you love has become a mental illness, a crime, and possibly a reason to get killed. If you don't know the story of Alan Turing, you need to check out the film, and if you want to know a little bit more about the maths behind it, definitely check out James Grimes' YouTube videos, I'll leave a link in the description. But basically, he was the father of computer science. He defined algorithms and essentially created the field of cryptography. And he used those powers, his computing knowledge and his problem solving skills to crack the Enigma code, which deciphered messages coming from World War II Germany, and then eventually led to the downfall of the Nazi party. And then he was convicted for being gay and given a choice between imprisonment or a chemical treatment which ultimately led to his suicide. Finally, in more recent history, we have this attitude of gay being okay as long as it's not in my face. So in the 70s, Dorothy Bernstein became the first female president of the Mathematical Association of America. She contributed a lot to maths and produced a lot of noteworthy papers alongside the chair of the MAA, Geraldine Jerry Kuhn, who she also lived with and then when they retired, moved to Connecticut together. In Jerry's obituary, they were described as long-term companions and mathematical collaborators. And I can't help but feel that we're missing one half of a very beautiful story there. So you might ask, why does it even matter if a mathematician is bi or trans or anything else? Maths is pure and abstract and awesome. And we should just celebrate the maths that people do, regardless of who they are, which would be great. If people, you know, didn't constantly erase the contributions of LGBTQ plus people, people of color and women in mathematics. But wouldn't it be better to celebrate the maths that people do and who they are? The world is about to face a lot of 
really tricky issues that will require the help of mathematicians and scientists, and we need as many people as possible to feel that they are valued and included in maths. We need mathematical ideas from a diverse group of people who have different skills and different ways of thinking. In short, maths needs you. I've included links below to some blogs from current inspirational mathematicians from the LGBTQ plus community, so be sure to check them out, and also the link for Spectra, which is the Association for LGBT Mathematicians. My favourite mathematical symbol this month is the congruence symbol for when two things are different but equal. Thanks very much for watching this month's mid-month math medley. Um, remember to give this video a like and subscribe, hit me up on Twitter if you're enjoying these. Let me know if there's anything you want in next month's one's pie day, so I'm sure there'll be plenty to be included. Bye!